Well, this is my first piece of content here in a little while on the channel. I've been back from the honeymoon for close to a week, and I'll get into detail a little bit more on that when I do my impact review. As I'm uh, recording this, I think impact wrapped up and I will be uh, watching it tomorrow. I'll be watching it Friday and then I'll be uh, reviewing the show. I did get I did catch last week's. Uh, I, I said since I was going to be on the honeymoon that I was not going to re uh, review it, but I did watch it and I thought it was OK. So I'm hoping that this, um, you know, the one that happened tonight, the one that aired is a much better episode. but. Just to get back in the swing of things, I wanted to talk about this a little bit. And I know I'm a little bit late to the party on this because it's been a talking point for a little bit. But obviously, I've been I've been out of pocket for a bit. Um, the Hurt Business, I know that these guys are, I, I believe they're rumored to be leaving WWE. I think they're still under contract, but they're expected to be uh, released or not so much released, but the contract, uh, their contracts will be running out. And I've been on social media enough to know that people are expecting them to show up in AEW because that's where they expect everybody to show up. And trust me, I'm the first person who will get on here. And when there's these free agents and people are like, oh, come to TNA, I'll be like, they're not coming here. You know, I'm the, I'm the first one that's going to be really uh, realistic about that. But I think there is a 10% chance that TNA can land these guys. Now, I do feel that they probably are likely headed to AEW because, you know, smart money says that that's what happens. But I, I do think TNA can can make a play for these guys. They obviously shoveled out some money for Ray. Uh, you're not, I believe you're not going to be paying Ali here pretty soon, which I understand. I mean, obviously he's on a per appearance basis, but I'm, I would imagine his rate is pretty high. So you're not paying him. Uh, you're very likely not paying Jordan Grace pretty soon. Uh, you've had a couple small departures here or there, but you know it, it, the money might be there. The money might be there for these guys. Uh, Lashley, Lashley obviously would cost a lot of money. MVP, I don't know. I don't. I don't believe he would be as expensive, um, especially being a manager. Um, as people would think that he might be. But I, I do think there is a a slight possibility that TNA can can land these guys, even if it's for a short-term thing. Now, if you factor Shelton Benjamin into all this, uh, I was listening to a Shelton Benjamin interview, and, and granted, to put this in perspective, it was about 12 or 13 years ago. It, it was a while ago. He was much younger. But he was saying that he has no real desire to wrestle for a part-time wrestling company. Uh, that you know, he 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 seems like the kind of guy, based off this interview. Now, granted, like I said, over a decade ago, that he would be more drawn to a company with a, a live television product. Obviously, in his age now, that may change. But no one's brought him in at this point. I thought TNA had a shot at bringing him in last year for a short-term program with Josh Alexander. I thought that was very possible. I'm sure they tried. We don't really know what he's trying to do in the wrestling industry right now. We don't even really know what MVP is trying to do. MVP was just trying to, he was just trying to be in the Royal Rumble so that his kid could see him compete in WWE and ended up turning into a producer role, an on-screen role. So his career extended much further than I think he was expecting. But I know I follow enough WWE as far as social media podcasts to know that the general consensus is that the ball was dropped with these guys. And people use that terminology all the time. Like the ball was dropped with Donovan Dijak. No, it wasn't. You know, but was the ball dropped with these guys and, uh, you know, doing some kind of program with Roman Reigns and his guys? Yeah, probably. You know, now TNA doesn't have the best track record of factions i mean maybe in the past but if you're talking about the last decade you know it, it's not really a place for factions we see the system and they've probably been booked the best that we've seen in a really long time but they you know they started off losing a bunch and then they won a whole lot and now they're losing again 
at it. They've been the closest thing to a dominant faction, but there's been no dominant factions in TNA. There's been factions we want to be dominant. Uh, you, you you think of Ohio versus everything. They get on screen and lose every single week. Um, Honor No More was hot for about a month, and then they started losing every single week. And um, I'm trying to think who else. I mean, it's not really a, a place for factions. But this is a group that really could come in and they could be very, very dominant. And one thing I will say about Lashley's time in TNA and even MVP's time in TNA, they were two of the more authentic parts of the show, I felt. And I'm always drawn to authentic personalities, authentic wrestlers, uh, people who can speak in a very authentic manner. That's why I will I will clown... Uh, um, What's his fuck? Uh, Tom Hannafin and and uh, Matt Raywall and some other on screen characters who who are playing a part, you know, and guys like Lashley MVP they they didn't come off like they were playing a part. They weren't playing a role. They were very very authentic in what they did. And you know Lashley was he had a hell of a run the last time with TNA, very very dominant, held every single freaking title at one point. He was one of the best parts of the show. I don't think it was stale. And he was probably the last like big WWE name where you didn't feel like he was just there for a quick paycheck. Like even now you can look at the Nick Nemeths of the world. You're just like, well, you know, the, the, the Mustafa Ali's and they're like, they're just here for a little while. Like we don't, they, they, especially, um, I don't think Nick Nemeth is going to necessarily be around past like maybe another six months. He could be, but we just haven't seen those guys come over and say, Hey, I'm going to be here for several years. Lashley's like really one of those last dudes who was a really, really big deal over there. And then spent a significant amount of time in TNA. And I'm sure he had, um, you know, good memories. And I just think he would be great, great on screen because, uh, face it, AEW is so oversaturated. They would just they would pop a rating for a little bit, but then they would just be another faction. They would just be another couple dudes because everyone f- fades into the background. There, it's it's almost impossible not to because there's so many people. And I think it was Booker T on his podcast that was saying, "Yo, they you know they they won't fade into the background in TNA." So if the money's there, it would be cool. I would love to see it. I think it's probably not likely, but I don't think it's an impossibility. And as I said, I'm one of the first people to get on here and say, hey, that's this isn't happening. That's impossible. I, th- I think there's a chance here, so I would like to see it. 